to the show, man. How are you? Thanks, man. I appreciate you guys having us on here. It's a, it's a big accomplishment to be on uh, Drag Illustrated. Sure. Yeah, well, thank you, man. Uh, we surely appreciate the time. I didn't know if we were going to get this pulled off or not. You were the next topic of conversation, man. Manny Bajinga wins the future class uh, again. Back-to-back victories in your uh, no prep Kings debut. You come out of the box swinging and clearly aren't going anywhere. Can you just take us through real quick, Manny? Like your what what attracted you? We were just talking about like the business of racing and how some of these sanctions and series maybe need to rethink the way they're approaching things. Can you give us a little insight as to what kind of made you, uh, what piqued your curiosity or piqued your interest about no prep Kings competition? Man, it's, um, it just seems like it's competitive racing. It seems like, um, it is a TV show and, 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 and it is being filmed. So if you can put all that aside, there is a lot of good competitive racing. There's good people. There's uh, camaraderie. There's, there's drama. There's, um, I mean, there's a flavor of things over there. So for us, it was just to try to go over there and beat the best as they all claim on TV. So that's what we're trying to accomplish. What do you make of um, just the fanfare and the spectacle? You and I talked about how many autographs and T-shirts and what ha- what was that experience like being exposed to these big crowds? I mean, it's obviously nothing that you're completely uh, un. un- uh, unused to. I mean, you've been to plenty of lights out events, massive events down at uh, South Georgia Motorsports Park. But what was your no prep Kings initial experience like? So the initial, um, the initial no prep Kings was a. So all I can compare it to is we've been to lights out, we've been to uh, Jason Miller's races. I mean, th- the house is packed. It's crazy. It's you know you, you got these loyal race diehard fans in. At No Prep Kings, you multiply that by two. It's like an NHRA or maybe even bigger. Uh, these, these fans are just, they're great. They're supportive. They're loyal. They'll cut their arm off to give the race of blood. It's like something I've never seen before. So it's like, um, it's just NHRA um, on steroids. It's just amazing. The fan base and the loyalty to the racers that the fans have is crazy. What do you, uh, I'm curious from a competition perspective, Bringing out Fred, the the feared red Mustang, who's you've been making waves with and Pro 275 for a while. It seems like you guys made a fairly seamless transition from radials to big tires and wheelie bars. Is this your first kind of go round with big tire racing, or is this? I know you did some 105W stuff, but is this your first big slicks and wheelie bars like full flesh, full fledged effort? I mean, it doesn't look like that right now, but. Uh... That's 12 or 13 runs on the car that we have. Wow. And um, it's just um, it's just good people behind us. It's just, you know, Jamie being the, the chassis guy, the tuner, and, and Franny at the shop doing all the, the leg work, and, and, you know, just Carlo. It's just a bunch of good family members and friends that just want to go have a good time. So it's just uh, – it all clicked. I mean, it, all the stars are aligned right now, but, you know, it's lonely on top, and it's easy to fall down. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm curious to talk about this big effort that you're making to to kind of capture the attention of the No Prep Kings crew, Sam Corcus and the guys at Pilgrim Studios. It was all over social media this last week when you had a flyover. There's a plane flying over, pulling a banner that says Free Fred. You're sending three, four hundred beach balls that say Free Fred out into the crowd. What's been the reaction to this? Do you think it's is uh, I mean, hey, man, there's a lot of PR people that could take a could take note here, take a lesson from Manny Bajinga and company, because you guys have really made your presence known almost overnight on and off the track. Well, I mean, as far as, as far as the, the, uh, as far as the, uh, the flyby and the beach balls, I mean, it's just what we do. We just like having a good time. We like being a a wise guy. We like uh, cracking jokes. And I think, man, there's no more of a, you know, of a statement says free Fred when they're having a driver's meeting. I just wanted to let them know I was there saying, Hey, I'm not going away. Here I am. Um, what was the response from your fellow racers? I mean, did you get some evil eyes? I mean, be honest. Did you get some dirty looks or do you think that they're going to be okay with it? Everybody that was, um, everybody that was friends and, and my local home track people, uh, they were all for it. They were all, uh, they're all on board and you know, you're going to have these, um, you're going to have these people that are a little on edge, feel a little threatened, but you know, it's just Fred. It's just another red Mustang. We're just coming out to play. 
what is your long-term plan? I mean, is this something that you want to pursue being on the show? Would you welcome that opportunity to, to commit to that many races? Because one of the things that we've heard and discussed a lot here on the show has been how serious of a commitment No Prep Kings is. It's one thing to hop into a couple of races, but when you start doing 15 a season, oftentimes back to back on different coasts, is that something that interests you or is that something that you would like to see Fred involved in? We would like to see Fred uh, absolutely involved in it. I mean, the whole crew, the guys, I mean, we love it. It's, it's, it's fun. It's a good time. It's not, um, it's not hurry up, do two races and go sit down for the rest of the day. It's, you know, it's, you know, this guy's calling that guy out. This guy wants to bet this guy for 200 bucks. Uh, I mean, the latest one is we got, uh, we got Odom. He, uh, he approached us on racing. So we want to race him for 50, 50 you daddies. So do you know what a you daddy is, Wes? I don't know that I do, Manny. All right, so an example, uh, you know, say we beat Odom and we say, you know, they're in the middle of filming. Who's the best racer on the planet on this track right now? His answer is you, daddy. So if I can get 50 of those from him and then make him wear my crew shirt when I beat him, I think we've made our statement. So uh, <laughs> I want to bring JT in here real quick. He's my <laughs> resident betting expert. Have you ever heard of this before? Uh, I love it. <laughs> I've never heard of it, but I love it. <laughs> uh, 50 you daddies. That is, that I, is I, a victory. Is this that... something you do a lot, Manny? Is that like a thing from up in your neck of the woods? I mean, it's actually, uh, it's actually a big thing in Louisiana. My buddy Carlo okay. came up with and, uh, Man, it, it's 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 worth more than five or ten grand. It's just pricey. oh yeah, I'm putting it in my wallet today. Yes, <laughs> I mean, that that's a freaking keeper it, right there, man. I <laughs> I, I absolutely love that. Baddest racer on the planet right now, you daddy. That's what <laughs> you daddy. <laughs> oh, I absolutely love it. Um, so tell me, what is the? I, I had a great question. Oh, what was it hard to swallow? Your and I'm not. Was it hard to like swallow your pride and have to go participate in the futures class? Because that's one thing that I want to like publicly give you kudos for. Um, we we given we've given Paige Coughlin a lot of praise for acknowledging that she was going to go and dive into the futures category because there's in the pro level racing ranks there's a lot of people that I've had tell me like oh man I would go do that but I'm not going to race my way in. I'm not going to go work my way up. I want to be in the invitational. And I think it's incredible that a team as accomplished as yours, Manny, was willing to say, hey, we'll go show up. We'll go hope we get in. We'll go hope that we get to be a part of this deal. I mean, kudos to you, but was that a tough decision to make? No, I mean, it, just our race schedule is so busy with the pro stuff and the radio stuff and, um, it's just so busy, but now we actually had a chance. And like Jamie was saying, you know, you can't win the lottery if you don't play a ticket. So we bought a ticket. We're going to these races. And, no, we're committed. But it's not tough to swallow. If those are the rules, it's no different than, you know, you can only have a 140 uh, blower on the card. You can't show up with a 144. So you, you got to follow the rules. If that's his procedure, which seems to be that's Sam's procedure of, hey, we want to show you, uh, we want to see that you have the commitment to go forward then you got to follow the guy's rules. It's just simple as that. And, you know, and there's nothing wrong with showing commitment. Um, you know, he runs a good ship over there. There's nothing, um, I'm not getting yelled at. So, I mean, I'm ahead of the game. Do you think that, was that a surprise at all, the organization? Because I think if you watch this stuff from afar, or if we even throw up one of these clips and you see a, a gazillion people gathered on the starting line, it, it's easy to think that this is a calamity, right? It's easy to think that this is a, a, is a mess, but by all accounts, it's the exact opposite of that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this. It might be chaos like you're seeing right now on the starting line and people, and they're just there like talking and betting, and, 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 and there's no like uh they're all being they're all watching what they're doing they're all careful they're all strategically placed but at the end of the day i can tell you i've never rolled into any race and they've had a chalkboard there saying hey you guys pull over here on the left you guys pull over here on the right if you're not in lanes in 10 minutes after i call you and i text you you're out if the car makes the run you're out don't come crying so i mean they do have it 100 percent, no doubt they have it very well organized, very well orchestrated. I mean, it, it is, you know, you're on deck. Let's go. It's it's pretty professional. Like I, that is I'm very happy with that. Well, it's exciting to hear that because we talked at the beginning of the show how No Prep Kings, it's been around. This is its fifth season, right? This is a series that's been 
in existence for quite a while, but it seems like only recently has it really gotten on the radar of the mainstream drag racing kind of fan base or whatever. I mean, we're talking about it alongside NHRA, PDRA, Midwest Drag Racing Series. I mean, it's part of the conversation now more so than ever, uh, which is a very exciting thing. Do you, what has the reaction been to your fellow competitors? Are you feeling like it's a good thing? I mean, I, I know obviously the off the record conversations that are being had is that, you know, hey, you, you appear to be and you are a pro level racer, a pro level race team that are coming over here. And I think there's some people that are getting a little defensive about you invading uh, their space. What, what's your take on all this? I mean, I think it's kind of funny, a pro level racer, like, uh, you know, my father was a sheep herder, herder back in Portugal. Like, there's no pro level in me. Like, we put in 100% effort. It's all heart. It's all, you know, it's all drive. It's good people around me. It's, uh, you know, the, the pro level, I mean, unless I have pro sheep back in Portugal, there's, there's nothing pro about me. <laughs> I'm, I'm good at what we do. I, we have a great team. But um, And if people are having conversations behind the scene, that's just maybe they're a little intimidated. Maybe they're a little threatened. You know, um, they'll get over it. Or they won't, right? And I think that's almost part of what's exciting about it because I think there's a belief system that they've got to protect their cast, they've got to protect these guys, and they can't have Manny Bajinga or anybody else come in and like upset the apple cart. But almost isn't that kind of contradictory to this belief system that they're every bit as good a racer as any other? Because you kind of can't have it both ways. That's the discussion or the debate that I've been having. We can't stand over here and say, hey, we're just as good as those guys. Try it. Come over here. It's not as easy as it looks. But then when someone takes you up on that opportunity, get all up in arms about it. Right? I, I agree with you. And I guess there's, diff there's different levels to people wanting to get into the no prep team. So there's levels of, hey, I want to be on TV. Uh, and I can see that. And, and, and I, I think that's why Sam kind of weeds them out and and gets the loyalty thing, which I agree a hundred percent. And then there's levels. Hey, I, um, I want to try to chase that 40 grand cause it's a lot of money. I want to try to run, win that. So I, I understand that. And then there's a level like us. We just want to go race the best. If that's the best that there is, I want to put that on my, on my belts, my notch on my belt saying, Hey, I beat the best there was. Let's go on to the next item. And that's my goal. It's not to be on TV. Like we just want to win. We want to race. We want to gauge ourselves. I think that's an incredible thing. And if that's where the attention is and that's where the action is and the the most successful and notorious racers in the country right now, by and large, comprise the cast of Street Outlaws and, and No Prep Kings. So there's no it doesn't surprise me at all that you guys want to be a part of this thing. So what I guess take us through looking forward. Will you be in Columbus? I mean, are you going to are you going to try to go to the rest of them? Or what's your game plan for the rest of the season, Manny? No, we're we're going as my as my son, Manny would say, knock, knock. It's Fred. We're here. We're uh, <laughs> going away. Um, you know, they, they, they can be negative people there on the start line. They can be saying that, you know, we'll never get in. That's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll roll the dice, but I'm not going away. I mean, we'll be there. Maybe we'll be in the futures for, for 15 years, but at the end of the day, I'm still going to be there at some point. They're going to say, Hey, come on in. Or they'll just be short a cast member and they'll need me to fill in. I'll be fine. I just want to race the best guys there are out there. That's all there is to it. What has the feedback been like from your fellow radial tire racers? I mean, you've got a big following in that scene. Are you getting a lot of people cheering you on? Because it does, in some regards, feel like you're kind of flying a flag, right? You're a guy who's been uh, closely associated with radial racing for a long time. Are, do you feel like you're representing that community by going out here and competing and, and winning in No Prep Kings? Do you feel like uh, I'm flying the flag for the radial guys, so to speak? I mean, just to go out there and go win with a radial car, um, in two races, that's amazing. You know, that's a big accomplishment for us and the team. But as far as the radio races, I mean, I think there's radio races that are coming over to tell you the truth. I've, I've been getting my phone blown up. Uh, you know, this is great. You know, what do we got to do? So I, I really do think that you, you're going to have some radio races come over and, and, and throw their uh, hat in the, in the ring and see what they can do because it, it is fun. It's definitely fun. I mean, we are going to go back to radio racing with a car. But uh, at the end of the day, we're, we're here to stay with this with this no prep deal. Well, it's very exciting. Manny, I appreciate your time so much today.